For national service, that's to get some in. They'll tell you now if you ask your dad's to get some in. So leave your mummy's laughing arms, there's no way you can win. You'll be victim of your vocal charms, so get some in. The rats got two years of your life, now isn't that a sin? There's only one way to get out, and that's to get some in. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. May I welcome you once again to one of Fritton St. Mary's now famous Meet the Celebrity Afternoons. But before we meet the celebrity, may I indulge myself for a moment? There are four husky lads staying at the vicarage this weekend, my son Matthew, and three of his comrades in arms taking a well-earned rest from their duties at a Royal Air Force camp uh, somewhere in the west of England. Careless talk costs lives. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, meet the boys in blue. <laughs> now let us think for a moment what national service really means. It means uh, service to one's nation, doesn't it? Yes, it does. <laughs> and our guest today has served his nation heroically. I must admit here to being somewhat of a rascal because the boys in blue will be as surprised as the rest of you. The speaker is a corporal from that self-same camp somewhere in the West Wing. <laughs> the ladies and gentlemen, accompanied by his charming wife, Corporal Percival Lawrence Marsh, George Mel. Celebrity Corporal Marsh. Padre, Mrs. Padre, <laughs> uh, Madame Arcala, the cub mistress, <coughs> ladies and gentlemen, people like me are ten a penny in the Royal Air Force. The whole of the surface is littered with heroes, so why I should be picked out defeats me. But the long arm of the church has reached out and felt my collar. So tell my story, I must. Although as my market, uh, pardon me, my chums down the front here will tell you, when I am normally asked to talk of my heroic deed, it is like trying to get blood out of a stone. But, however, chocks away and here goes. A few months ago, I was serving my country in Labrador, at the place the dogs are named after for any of you canines in the audience. <laughs> I was returning with Wing Commander Pinky Pinkerton from a remote Eskimo settlement where I had assisted in a very tricky operation for the removal of some Eskimo gallstones. Like cannonballs, they was. <laughs> Our troubles began when, due to a miscalculation on the part of the officer, our snow cats overturned. Oh no! No! You bloody fool! How do you manage to do that? It's not my fault, sir! Well, you were driving. How on earth can you turn a snow cat over? I can't get used to driving on the right hand side of the road! What road? <laughs> The accident, unfortunately, propelled Pinky Pinkerton against a tree, a pine tree, and never was that fine English gentleman to regain consciousness. So there I was, with a wounded officer, 84 miles from base, with a temperature cold enough to freeze the ball at the butt <laughs> off a Lee Enfield. And I don't mind admitting to you, good people, that I was a bit upset. I stood in the snow, and I said to myself, Percival Lawrence Marsh, is this the end? Is this where you shuffle off your mental coil? <laughs> but suddenly I realised quite calmly what I had to do. Oh, God! Oh, God! Sir, what are we going to do? Use the radio, you fool! Get through the base! Use the radio, you fools! Get through the base! Oh, oh no! It's frozen! It's iced up! We 
hadn't broken the radio in his fall. <laughs> but there you are. These things are sent to try us. There was only one thing to do. I calculated my course by the stars. I picked up the unconscious officer and I started to walk those 84 miles. After a day or two, I got my second wind. As I struggled on through that white hell, mile after agonising mile. <laughs> And do you know, ladies and gentlemen, what I did to keep myself going? I tiddled and pommed, like this. Pom li pom tiddly pom ti pom pom tiddly pom ti pom tiddly pom ti pom. Sing together, our bodies between our knees. Stop singing, sir! You're driving me mad. What do you think it's like for me? I'm cold, sir. I'm cold. I've already given you all my extra clothing. No, you haven't. You've still got your scarf. Ah, ah, you self-centered swine. I can't. Oh, bro. I can't. I'm frozen stiff. You're paralyzed with fear. Oh, come on. We must keep moving. Ah. They must be looking for us by now. Ah. Well. What? Can I have your scarf or not? <laughs> Tuesday dawned, and I knew that unless I was found, this would be my last day on Earth. The weight of Pinky Pinkerton had become a thing beyond human comprehension. I was near to collapse. But I struggled on and on. rescue had come and they gave me a medal but let me tell you this ladies and gentlemen you don't do what I did for medals I did it because in a house at the top of the mall there lives a wonderful lady and I have got her uniform on <laughs> Most inspiring. Uh, once you dragged it out of me, eh, Mrs. Reverend Lily? <laughs> when you were in that door, did you see any pain? You must be very proud of your husband, Mrs. Marsh. Oh, I am your Reverend. Oh, please, away with protocol. It's Douglas and Persephone. Where? Uh, what? <laughs> oh, <laughs> Percival and Alice. Uh -huh. uh, tell me, Alice, have you any children? Uh, afraid not, Persephone. <laughs> bit of trouble downstairs, you know. Oh, oh dear. That can be a problem with living in a flat. No. <laughs> I don't mean that kind of downstairs. I was referring more to the way the dog doesn't bark. You know. Uh, no, I'm afraid I do. Uh, Alice, darling, don't bore for Spephany. I always say, you know, that we have got the largest family in the world. I don't follow. Are my recruits done? I like to think that all the lad lads that have passed through my hands have been like sons to me. Suffer little children? Oh, no, because I'm very kind to them. <laughs> you know, I'm not afraid to use the word. I think I love them. In a non-Nancy way, of course. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. Uh, do you know, Potsophony and Doug, the most remarkable thing of all, I think that my lads love me in return. Did you hear that? I'll clog him. <laughs> Jakey, don't make a scene. 
Perhaps we can put some powdered glass in his tea later. I've never heard such a pack of lives in all my life. Well, he's got an honest degree in lying, hasn't he? We all know that. There is one consolation. Matthew's mum and dad are just being polite. I mean, you must have told him what a swine he really is. No, I haven't. You write home all the time. You don't swear. Your letters must be covered in asterisks every time his name comes up. It doesn't. I believe that if you can't say something nice about somebody, then don't say anything at all. Do you mean to tell me that they don't know he's the most evil git that ever drew breath? Yes. <laughs> Matthew, you won't have to apply for your sainthood. It'll be delivered automatically. Oh, I'm no saint. I'm seething inside. I mean, my mother and father are good people, and there they are being taken in like a... by a beast like that. Quite honestly, chaps, I'm only just keeping myself under control here. <laughs> Ah, oh, there you are, lads. The good corporal's been telling me what wonderful friendships are forged in the services. Yes, forged is a very apt word, Mr. Lilly. <laughs> it must make your duties run like uh, well-oiled machinery. Yes, yes, and we all know who the sump oil is, don't we? No pardon? <laughs> there he goes again. <laughs> that is Jacob, the joker in our little grocery. <laughs> oh, yes, like any family, we all have our parts to play. This is Kenneth, our barrack room philosopher. And this, of course, little Bruce Leckie, the optimist of the group. And, of course, Matthew, our spiritual advisor. You know, Doug, many a time and oft he has helped me over a little bump in my religious thinking. Good boy, Matthew. And what about you, you Corporal? What's your role in this little family? Oh, that is not for me to say, sir. All right, lad, you tell me. What is Corporal Munch? <laughs> Uh, Matthew? Well, he's... he's... It's no good. I can't stand any more of this. Matthew! No! Come back, sir. I won't, sir! <laughs> Another pint, please, Mr. Talbot. Are you sure, Matthew? I've got the money, if that's what you're worried about, Mr. Talbot. I'm not saying you haven't, Matthew, but you've only just had one. And I'd like another one, if you please, Mr. Talbot. All right, boy. All right. Oh, there he is. Oh, God, he's taken to drink. <laughs> Hello, Matthew. Hello. Uh, I see you're on pints. What if I am? Uh, don't walk away, Mr. Talbot. I'm in the chair. What are you lads having? Three halves, please, Mr. Talbot. And quick about it. You let your manners wonder, boy. Who cares? <laughs> Matthew! Look, come on, this, this isn't you, is it? Come on, stop putting on an act. Well, I'm just flipping fed up, that's oh, all. There's no need to run off like that. Why don't you just get it off your chest and tell your parents what a slob Marsh is? I mean, what's the point? People like Marsh who lie and cheat and bully always seem to come out on top. Now, don't cash your chips in. They don't. Do they, Bruce? Uh, Yes, they do. He's right. You can't beat them. Join them. That's what I say. Give us a fag, somebody. You don't smoke. Oh, shut your cake, old Richardson, and crash the ash. <laughs> crash the ash? I'll get him. Here, I'll let you. Great. <laughs> I'm going to smoke and smoke from now on until I have nicotine up to my elbows. Uh, then what are you going to do, Matthew? Go round people's doorsteps and... Poke their milk bottle tops in, eh? Worse. I shall probably blow off and not say pardon. <laughs> Jakey. It's, it's funny, isn't it? I mean, all right, it might be funny, but yes, it is, but no, it isn't. No, it's no good trying to be something you're not. I tried to be cheery once, nearly drove me mad. People change, jock. And for your information, Matthew Lilly is one of those people. So there you are. Matthew Lilly, I'm surprised at you. Oh, he hello, Arkela. Walking out on people like that? You never had such bad manners when you were a cub. <laughs> yes, well, I'm not a cub anymore, am I? I'm a man now. Well, surely well behave like one. Very well, I will. Another pint. And what are you having, toots? <laughs> That is not what I meant. OK, let's get down to business then. Show us your suspenders. <laughs> now, that's quite enough from you. Yeah? 
Yes, Matthew. Oh, winkles, Mr. Talbot. <laughs> There's only one way to get out, and that's to get some in. Get some in! That's what I'd call a bit of crackling. I'd give her eight hours to get out of my bed. <laughs> you wouldn't know what to do with her if you had her in there. No? No. Matthew, don't you think you've gone ape for long enough now? It's been a week. I'm only just starting, Puff House. Watch it. <laughs> what do you think of the new bins, Jockstrap? You look like Hamlet. Oh, shut your pipe. <laughs> Still think it's funny? No, I bloody don't. You know the worst of it, don't you? He's getting thick with Marsh. Oh, don't Marsh love it, eh? Aye, uh, but it's unnatural. It's like a Ranger supporter being pally with a Celtic supporter. <laughs> I don't know. It's like Satan, isn't it? He was an archangel till he fell and become a drill instructor. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good morning, Matthew. <laughs> yeah. Right, rat bags, daily routine orders. And who was supposed to have polished that steriliser? Richardson. Matthew, that's telling tales. Oh, grow up, puff out. Well, I've told you about that. Ah, uh, he's right. He's the only one out of the four of you who has grown up. That's why he's the only one who's coming down my ass tonight for a booze up. Yes, yeah, great purse. Uh, corporal. No, no, purse to you, mate. Look, Matthew, we all thought we'd go down a camp cinema tonight, didn't we? Ah, uh, it's South Pacific. Any nude tarts in it? <laughs> oh, don't be daft. Oh, well, stuff it then. If it had been the outlaw, I could have taken a gander at Jane Russell's bubbles. <laughs> Coming <laughs> first. <laughs> All right, Matthew. <laughs> You've lost him, haven't you? You've lost him. <laughs> See you later, Matthew. <laughs> ah. Oh. Ah, there you are. A quick Sorry. nozzle inspection, sir. <laughs> well, uh, forget that. Oh. The most extraordinary things happened. There's been a sudden thaw in Labrador and they've found Pinky Pinkerton's diary. Hey? Yes, it was discovered just where you were rescued. Hey? It's like a voice reaching out from the past, isn't it? Uh, what does he say then? What does he say? I don't know. I haven't read it. Who has then? Who has? Nobody. No, uh, C.O. Goose Bay realised immediately that no one but you should have this diary and I absolutely concur. So there you are, Corporal, unopened. Oh, I, uh, 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 I know, Marsh, I know. You still carry the emotional wounds. No need to speak, old man. No need to speak. <laughs> oh, uh. Oh. Get in it. What's left of it? My head hurts. Serves you right. When I let you and Percy down here for a quiet game of cards, it was for a quiet game of cards, not a house wrecking party now. Come on, get out! Can't see my coat. There you are. That must be yours and all now. Come on. <laughs> get out! And I hope you're hang over. Hang's over. Percy, where are you? Hello, Alice. A wonderful night. My God, oh. look at you. You haven't even got the good grace to feel horrible the morning after. The beer hasn't been made that can make me feel horrible. No, you just naturally have. Come on, get up that camp and out my sight. All right, my darling, anything to oblige. Uh, Alice? Yes? Uh, have you seen a red book at all? I think I must have dropped it. I give it to that little goggles person. I thought it was his. Oh, my God. You know what? Oh, there are things in that book, Alice. Things that would put a bit of a different slant on me. Been a bag of wind again, have you? Look, Alice, if that book gets out, things could turn a little bit nasty for me. Don't you mean for us? Oh, my loyal queen. Now, that is typical of you, isn't it? Wanting to try and share the burden with me. Cobblers. <laughs> I'm thinking 
thinking of me losing my house. And if I do, Percy Marsh, I'll have just two words to say to you. D. Voss! Oh, no, no, just a minute, Alice, just a minute. Don't fly off into one of your highly strung moods. I mean, it's all right. I've taught him to behave like me, who is still safe. Really? Yeah. Say you had something on a mate of yours. What would you do? Oh, it's obvious, isn't it? Shot him. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh. Rotten little copycat. He's got to be stopped. <laughs> uh, Matthew, there's someone to see you in there. Hope it's a whack. I could do with a bit of slap and grumble. <laughs> slap and tickle and it ain't a whack. Oh? Don't play games with me, Sonny. Who is it, then? It's me, Matthew. Father? Yes. <laughs> What are you doing here? I'm here because you have friends, Matthew, these lads. They were kind enough to telephone me and tell me of this continuing secular rebellion of yours. Big mouths. Step inside, sir. No, sir. You will, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> I hope we've done the right thing. He won't give him a kicking, will he? <laughs> no, dads don't do that. Mine did. Oh. It's exciting now, isn't it? Being next to a place where there's a wrestling match with a devil going on. Oi, you three. Oh, he's late. He should have been in the ring by now. Hello, Corporal. Have any of you seen Lily? Oh, he's in there with his dad. Ah. Uh, uh, incidentally, talking of red books, did he mention a red book at all? No. Good. Oh, he was reading one, though. Oh, get out of my way. Ah, <laughs> oh, hello, Doug. Good morning, Corporal. How's Pepsophony? Very well, thank you. Oh, I see you've got the diary, then. Yes. Uh, have you read it at all? Matthew, tell me what was in it, yes. Um, I don't know if you need a new steeple or anything for your church, Doug, but I'm quite willing to bung in a few quid. <laughs> I don't think so, Corporal. I see. It's the holier-than-thou caper, is it? It's straight to the CO with it. Tell him what we're going to do, Matthew. What? Well? Hey? We're going to do nothing. I see. Straight to the air ministry with it, is it? I said we're going to do nothing. The Reynolds News, you're going to expose me in the papers. Corporal, we're going to do nothing. Ah, oh, getting subtle, are you? You're going to broadcast it all over the hospital tannoy system. Oh, for goodness sake, there you are. Hey, uh, hang on. Let me get this right. You cop for the book, you pass it on to your old man, you both know what's in it, yet you give it back to me and you're not going to do nothing about it? Exactly. But why? Yours is the burden, Corporal. You're the one that has to live with a lie. You're not trying to make me have nightmares, are oh, you? Of course I'm not. It's uh, time for church parade, Father. Shall we go? Aye, oh, Twiggett, you're going to tell the padre and he's going to blab it to all and sundry from the pulpit. <laughs> That's not what church is for. Why don't you come along and find out for yourself? I've got all in my sock. Is that all right? <laughs> It's 
time for national service, that's to get some in. They'll tell you now if you ask your dad's to get some in. So leave your mummy's laughing out, there's no way you can win. Your victim of your vocal charm, so get some in. The rats got two years of your life, now isn't that a sin? There's only one way to get out, and that's to get some in. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. May I welcome you once again to one of Fritton St. Mary's now famous Meet the Celebrity Afternoons. But before we meet the celebrity, may I indulge myself for a moment? There are four husky lads staying at the vicarage this weekend, my son Matthew, and three of his comrades in arms taking a well-earned rest from their duties at a Royal Air Force camp uh, somewhere in the west of England. Careless talk costs lives. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, meet the boys in blue. <laughs> now let us think for a moment what national service really means. It means uh, service to one's nation, doesn't it? Yes, it does. <laughs> and our guest today has served his nation heroically. I must admit here to being somewhat of a rascal because the boys in blue will be as surprised as the rest of you. The speaker is a corporal from that self-same camp somewhere in the West Wing. The ladies and gentlemen, accompanied by his charming wife, Corporal Percival Lawrence Marsh, George Mill. Celebrity Corporal Marsh. Padre, Mrs. Padre, <laughs> uh, Madame Arcaila, the cub mistress.